Hey guys, um, this is about C19 and children and why they are less susceptible to C19. So let's get into it. So this was a news report on, a, on some research that has been done. Uh, this was back in July the 7th, 2020. So lung physiology and immune function in children could be protecting them from severe C19. Yes, that's what we've done to the young children, unfortunately. As we can see between pediatric lungs and adult lungs, there, there are differences, decreased epithelial expression of ACE2 receptor, TMPR, OS22. So the ability to actually, first of all, get into, you know, so because the children's their, their sort of the ACE2 receptor um, is still, it's not fully developed, you know, the amount of density that, that an adult has. So it's still being developed um, and still, you know, these pathways that actually connect between, you know, the potential for a virus to get in. The immune system is still developing. It's sort of that, um, some say up until about the age of 10 or 11, it depends. There's a lot of factors that actually a child can actually grow a bit faster or not hormonal, many other factors. So, um, but it's usually within that age bracket. Um, this, so better preservation of pol polymerase um, endothelial um, barrier. So you basically got better barriers in terms of the circulatory system through the lungs, which means less potential for, you know, you could say pathogens to sneak in, to creep in to the system. So these are sort of differences. Um, differences in lung physiology and immune function in children could be why they are more often um, spared from severe Ill, illness associated with C19 than adults, according to pediatric and adult um, physicians at the University of Texas Health Science Center at Houston. And we will, and that's basically the Baylor College of Medicine, the team that actually investigated this. And that was published in the American Journal of Physiology, Lung, Cellular and Molecular Physiology. So that's just some of the data that they were actually talking about. Talking about the angiotensin um, uh, 2, other doors that allow. SARS CoV 2, and all CV that causes C19 to enter the body cell. Children naturally have less in the lungs than adults. So it's less expressed. So it's underdeveloped. The expression of um, ACE2 is under, underdeveloped in young, young kids. As they grow, they will express it more um, as they get into adulthood. So the older a child gets, that will change over time. The ACE2 are important for viral entry, very important. So they've got less viral entry. So the viral load that's coming in, it seems to be less um, in children because, so in that regard, so we'll go further down. So this doesn't take ages. In addition to fewer ACE2 receptors, so in addition to that, authors noted that the immune system in children responds to vir viruses differently than that of adults, leaves less opportunity for severe illness in pediatric patients. There are several different mechanisms behind the difference, including retention of T cells in children. I've talked about T cells and the first line of defense, that basically does a lot of clearance, which are able to fight off or limit inflammation. Critical T cells have a, a viral response and also an immune modulation response. In severe cases of adult um, C19 patients, we've seen that those T cells are reduced. So the ability to fight the virus is also reduced. In children, those T cells seem to be maintained so that they are still able to prevent the virus. 
I'll tell you what the mechanism there is. It's quite simple. Senescence. I've talked about senescence and how taurine can help with senescence um, of T cell, T lymphocytes. It's in the literature. We know quite clear that uh, um, cell senescence doesn't only affect your own body cells, more comorbidities, more um, issues like uh, um, uh, path pathology that older people tend to have. As you get older, you sustain more cellular damage, more senescence. And that's not only senescence in your normal cells, but also in your immune cells, which basically makes them less capable of doing the job. That's why younger kids are able to clear the stuff much better than older people. So we older people, oldies, need to get on the vitamin D. We need to do fasting to clear out all the old senescence of the immune system, three-day fast, clear it out then basically we'll rebuild it with taurine and vitamin D levels. And we need to have already very high so we can actually produce more um, stem cell activation in the bone marrow so we can produce healthy new T cells and then keep them healthy with a good level of taurine, which basically means taurine equals animal foods that are high in it, which is basically things like meat and fish and dairy and things like that. Mm. Who would have guessed an animal-based diet can furnish those advantages? So they said, they're they just talking about here about the interleukins and stuff like that. And I was tend to express hyperinflammation states, stuff like that. Again, we do because we've got poor T cells. Most people have got comorbidities. A person who's got basically diabetes, underlying heart disease, cancer, and all that are going to have very poor T lymphocyte um, counts. Cancer people, if they've done chemo as well, will even have lower. They're even more vulnerable, including to the jab of the hut, um, uh, sort of, uh, you know, uncontrollable spike proliferation, um, which can't be, um, can't be cleared out effectively with poor T lymphocytes. I'll put a video up here about the importance of that. So some of you people have already seen it, but anybody else that haven't, they can actually check them out and find out. So uh, there was just one part here that I did. Oops, oops, oops. So the, Interleukin-10 um, in, inhibits the inflammation of other components like interleukin-6 that are detrimental. Adults tend to ex experience hyperinflammatory states where kids do not. In preclinical studies in mice, interleukin-10 has also shown to decrease with age. Now, we don't have any um, human studies, but we do know from... because. We've seen certain, we know that in ACE2 receptors are much less in younger mice. And it's a mammalian thing. All mammals have these ACE2, these receptors. So, and the interleukins, both IL-10 and IL-6. Interleukin-6 obviously is the one that actually caught, you know, but uh, interleukin-10 declines with age and declines as that sort of thing. And then lung, the lung tissue of children naturally has a high concentration of regulatory T cells. Patients with higher levels of T cells also have higher levels of interleukin 10, also known as human cytokine synthesis inhibitor factor, an anti-inflammatory cytokine. Not all cytokines are bad. There are some anti-inflammatory ones as well, like interleukin 10. And Basically, when you've got very strong immune system, T cells, you tend to have also this. And it usually goes hand in hand in older age with vitamin D status. The better vitamin D status is, the better T lymphocytes, the better interleukin 10 as well. And it's better regulated as well because of the regulatory effect. It's got a lot of um, vitamin D receptors. So basically, young children, you know, have a much more healthier immune system. They haven't gone through 
decades and decades of inappropriate lifestyle choices, seed oils, um, processed foods, and many other things to damage severely their immune system and cause them countless amounts of senescence. You don't see this in tribal populations. This is Western populations. That's where we're seeing this. And these are Western academics that are actually looking at Western populations and the high levels of senescence um, in the immune system and poorer function. So obviously, you know, the ACE2 receptor expression is less developed in younger um, uh, children and much more developed in older people, which means that the, both it within the nasal area and in the mouth area, that we can take in more rapidly, more of these viral particles. Um, but at the same time, the kids have less, so less opportunity and also better non-senescent T lymphocytes to basically combat. So this combination is, and where are we finding kids that basically are failing this? It's usually, if you look behind the story, you'll find kids that have got underlying genetic issues, underlying comorbidities, diabetes, and other things that are actually making them vulnerable. That means those sort of lifestyle choices that their parents made have actually made these children far more vulnerable in terms of they don't have the more robust immune system, a younger, healthier immune system to fight off these things. And so that's a story. And we see that also with adults, the ones that get the worst outcomes in their 30s, 40s, 50s onwards, again, is poor immune function, which tends to correlate very well with the lifestyle stuff. That's what we've seen. We've seen the diabetes, we've seen all these. These people are much more representative of the people actually dying from um, with the actual um, disease in that regard. And it's one thing that I, that I always um, uh, like to point out. If you go back to the old influenza days and all that, the pop, you know, like the in the early 90s and late 80s when there was severe influenza, the population was much younger and still the levels were very high as, you know, as I pointed out in that other video. And that quite clearly shows that the, um, that are basically, you know, could this disease have been much lower than that? Um, uh, the outcomes much lower than uh, 30 years ago when we were relatively, you know, the diet wasn't completely and utterly and the lifestyle wasn't completely and utterly in, in a mess as it is today. 30 years ago, people weren't as obese, diabetic or as sick and still higher numbers perished by, by that influenza compared to this one. And so I beg the question, since our numbers are more or less similar and these kids are got very robust immune systems compared to adults, why are we introducing these poor kitties to Jabba the Hutt? You know, I'll let you ponder that, you know. Um, uh, you know, my, my views are quite clear. What I think of these people that are basically mandating those things, um, criminal, in my personal opinion. But uh, I'll let you ponder that. You've got the data. You've seen some of the other information. Um, you can make up your own mind. You're big enough, boys and girls, to do that. Anyway, see you.